Welcome back. I don't waste your time. Let's get straight into it. So if you guys follow me on Twitter, you would know that I do have a very small stake in Ulta Beauty stock, which I did acquire in, I believe, October, November of 2023. Um, nothing meaningful. Of course, Ulta does have plenty of risk factors. But earlier today, I tweeted out regarding how Ulta seems to be trading at a massive discount. And based off of my free cash flow calculator, which we'll go take a look at later in the video, Alta ranks second best among all the different companies that I'm interested in in my investable universe, right? Trading at roughly 19 times forward uh, free cash flows, Alta is extremely cheap by my estimates, and it's expected to grow around 12% out for the next roughly five years or so, right? Again, we're going to go through this video around how I arrived at those numbers, why I think it's cheap and all that. But for starters, I'm sure many of you guys don't really know what Alta Beauty is, or I guess kind of the, the name gives it away, but Alta Beauty is in fact a beauty retailer and they sell all types of makeups, cosmetics, uh, perfumes, everything, everything, uh, skincare, all that type of stuff, right? Yeah, so they outline it right here. Uh, this is by the way, um, the 2023 investor presentation, I think. Um, so, no, sorry, 2022 investor presentation. I wasn't able to find the other one, but um, yeah, as you can see, they sell a bunch of different stuff. So hair care products, skin care, cosmetics, fragrance, uh, bath products. I'm, I'm not sure what bath products would be, but all, all different types of stuff, right? And um, what's important to note about Ulta, which, yeah, right here. What's important to note about Ulta is a smaller uh, portion of total customers or total shoppers, as they like to say, about two thirds of their shoppers accounts for the majority of uh, revenue that is generated in Alta. So two thirds of their shoppers account for 83% of their uh, revenue. The reason this is important is because uh, unlike other retailers where there isn't much differentiation between um, the various products that, for example, Walmart versus Target versus um, Sears, which I believe is out of business now, right? If they're all selling toothpaste at roughly the same price, there's absolutely no differentiation between you having any loyalty to buying from Walmart versus Target, right? However, the thing that's important to note with Alta, they are often in deals with, for example, I think uh, Rihanna with um, her, her makeup brand, Kylie Jenner, and uh, all, all these different uh, celebrities. They have these exclusive deals where they're only going to sell that celebrity's makeup in Alta stores only. So when you go to Walmart, for example, you can't find Kylie Jenner makeup or Rihanna makeup or all these other celebrities and stuff, right? It's exclusive to Alta Beauty. I don't know exactly which celebrities they have, but I know that they have certain celebrities. I think Kylie Jenner is um, with Alta. But the point is they have all these exclusive deals with these, um, with these uh, celebrities, right? And then on top of that, what's important to note, uh, which is different from Alta compared to other retailers, right? Say, for example, um, uh, William Sonoma, which sells uh, furniture, not furniture, I think uh, kitchen utensils and that type of stuff, right? Uh, what's important to note is you don't have to go buy kitchen utensils. You don't buy new kitchen utensils until they're pretty much broken or uh, you want to get something with a cool design. It's, it's a completely discretionary item to buy, right? But... Uh, and technically, uh, beauty products are also discretionary. You don't have to buy them. But realistically, most women in, in the world, and this is not a generalization on women, but most uh, women in the world uh, w would like to buy beauty products and use beauty, pro beauty products consistently. So it kind of creates that um, subscription-like nature to Alta Beauty and the stuff that they're selling. Uh, compare, so there's like toothpaste and stuff, right? Or toilet paper and all these different products. And those also have that uh, subscription-like element to them where you technically it is discretionary, but everybody would need to buy those things eventually. Over here, this is the different uh, categories of products they sell. So they have, they say mass, mastige and all these different words. Cheap, medium, expensive, very expensive, right? And you might notice, so, okay, so they do have Fenty Beauty by Rihanna, uh, side note to what I was saying earlier, but you might notice, like, for example, Elf Beauty, CeraVe, which is owned by, I want to say, I think it's owned by LVMH, and then Ordinary owned by Estee Lauder. So, yeah, they have all these different brands, right? Um, and they're at various price points, uh, 
it's kind of weird that they name it mass and mastige and all this stuff, right? Uh, another thing to note, and this is completely central to my thesis on Alta Beauty, if we would scroll down here, here we go. They have 40, and this is two years ago, they have 40 million members and 95% of the revenue is made by people who use uh, the app or their uh, rewards, the, the, that are rewards members, right? So 95% of revenue is coming from all these people that uh, use the app consistently and get rewards and get their points and whatever. Now, 40 million might not sound too insane for someone who doesn't know necessarily, oh, okay, uh, realistically, how much should a rewards app have in members, right? To give you an idea, and no, they're not comparable industries, but to just give you an idea, for example, McDonald's has about 40 million members. Starbucks, 31 million members. Now, I'm going to remind you guys, Starbucks has, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of 30,000 stores. McDonald's, I think, uh, yeah, it says more than 30,000 stores. That's that's uh, how many stores offer the app or use the app. But I think McDonald's has north of 40,000 stores. Ulta Beauty is at what, like 1,300? Yeah, 1,300 stores. So you have a company with 1,300 stores having the same number of members on their app as McDonald's with, what is that, nearly 30 times more stores, <laughs> right? So for, there's McDonald's with 40 million stores, same amount of members as Alta with only 1,300 stores, right? This, again, as I was mentioning earlier, this creates that subscription-like aspect to this company where, sure, it, it is a non-discretionary item that these customers need to purchase, but is it really, right? Makeup. They, it's something that needs to that expires and women consistently come back to buy it over and over again. Now, you might be thinking, okay, great. So Alta Beauty, great company, qualitatively, but what are the risk factors? There is actually quite a lot of risk factors. So this is off of the Morningstar report, which if you didn't know, uh, Morningstar is the, I guess it's a research firm, but uh, they're the company that they, they put out these reports and all these different equities, uh, talking about the risk factors and uh, the, the moat trend, the economic mode, their business strategy. Oh, it, you have the tabs right here, right? Fair value estimates, all that type of stuff. So I'm just gonna quickly read um, the risk and uncertainty part. This is a little bit dated, but then again, the presentation that we just read through is from 2022. So anyways, they go on to say, our Morningstar uncertainty rating for Alta is medium. We think that the firm's push into prestige beauty, so prestige being very expensive, uh, its large e-commerce presence, nearly 20% of sales, its large loyalty member program members and partnership with no moat target makes it less risky than many other retailers and consumer products. So in essence, they just said what I've been saying for the past couple minutes. Even so, Alta competes with drugstores, mass merchandisers, department stores, e-commerce, and many others some of these competitors, such as No Moat Walgreens, Narrow Moat CVS, and Wide Moat Walmart, interesting, they give Walmart, what, I guess because of scale economies, right? Have many stores, have many more stores. So this is true, right? All these different competitors they just named off, they're much bigger competitors with more stores selling more products and uh, frankly, a lot more product categories. Alta's very specialized into what they're selling. Moreover, direct competitor Sephora continues to open stores and has begun to offer a broader selection of mass market items. So a little bit of history for you guys, if you didn't know, Sephora, which is owned by LVMH, if you didn't know, uh, used to be uh, significantly more luxury and selling higher end beauty products. And then slowly they've kind of expanded their uh, business line into including more mass items, as they say, or cheaper products um, that appeal to, uh, as they say, more mass markets, right? Alta is also exposed to changes in the retail landscape in the US. The source of 100% of its revenues the source of one, yeah, well, obviously. Many physical stores and shopping centers are experiencing declining traffic due to online competition and market saturation. This is very important. So you have, in the past decade, companies like Amazon, where they've driven all this online e-commerce, right? And it's completely destroyed the, uh, co completely destroyed companies like uh, Best Buy, right? All these different electronics stores. They, they are essentially bankrupt at this point, or at least in the coming decade, they're most likely going to be bankrupt. Not in the case of Alta, though. In the case of Alta, and I'm sure if you have women in your life, which I hope everyone watching does, um, if you go ask them, I'm sure most of them would tell you that with makeup or candles or some of these other items, 
you need to physically see it and, and feel it and uh, look at the packaging. And oftentimes, even if you do get past the idea of you know not looking at it physically, um, it makes more sense to buy it directly from Alta or like Alta's online store, which as I say is 20% of their sales or um, some other reputable retailer because buying it off of something like Amazon, you might get a cheap uh, version of it that comes from a foreign country and the ingredients aren't original to the product that you're trying to buy. And of course, it is makeup and skincare that we're talking about here. Um, people really do care about putting the right ingredients and using the right ingredients on their body, right? Moving on, uh, they go on to say, while possibly healthier than many indoor malls, some centers are in decline. We believe it's relatively newer st uh, store footprint and lease expirations in the next 10 years. This is horrible grammar. Should enable it to move some stores. Alta is highly exposed to consumer spending and the health of the cosmetics market, which primarily consists of discretionary items. I strongly disagree with that. I don't think what Alta sells is discretionary. Uh, frankly, I think, again, I, I feel like a broken record here. What Alta sells is a subscription at its core. Women want to feel pretty, and they're going to get that from Alta. They're going to purchase makeup and cosmetics from Alta. Consumer spending on makeup, 42% of sales in 2022, is especially important for the company. It reported disappointing results in both 2019 and 2020 on... Okay, interesting. So 2019, we'll give them that. 2020, um, COVID, right? on a slow makeup market and fewer product introductions. Indeed, industry participants have noted a decline in innovation in sales in color cosmetics since 2015-17, a period during which Alta reported double-digit same-store sales growth. So, okay, uh, big surprise. Alta, with a significantly smaller store count and rapidly expanding, uh, had significantly higher same-store sales growth, right? Which, if you didn't know, same-store sales... Um, they just simply take, for example, if you open a store on year one and it does $100 in revenue, and then the following year it does $110, that's 10% same store sales growth, right? So we're not taking the company making new uh, stores. We're not taking that into consideration. We're simply taking in of the existing store count, how much did their revenues go up, right? Ulta is a highly exposed to consumer spending and health of cosmetics market. We'll go on to FinChat and I'll, I'll put up the revenue charts. I really want you guys to find the highly exposed to consumer spending and the health of the cosmetics market. Um, but we'll go, we'll go take a look at that in a second. I, again, I really do disagree with the fact that Alta is discretionary. I, I highly disagree with that. Consumer spending on makeup, 42% of sales in 2022, is especially important for the company. Okay. It reported disappointing results in both... Oh, sorry, I believe we did already read this. At the bottom here, I guess, uh, they say, we do not believe Alta faces any material environmental, social, and governance risks. There are concerns about safety and counterfeiting with regards to beauty products, but we do not believe there is any significant threat to Alta. So again, we mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, counterfeiting of beauty products um, is something that exists, especially if you're buying from some random uh, fulfillment by Amazon person from the Amazon third-party sellers, right? counterfeits are definitely a thing, but also thankfully because they have actual relationships with these suppliers and distributors, um, they don't face any of those problems. Moving on, you guys might be thinking at this point, okay, great. So Alta is a great company qualitatively and the risk factors are not really risk factors. Sure, there's competition, but it's a retailer at the end of it all, right? Fundamentals wise, how does Alta look? So as I kind of hinted out earlier in the video at the start, Alta has a very cheap valuation. For reference, the S&P 500 is trading at roughly maybe about 28 to 33-ish times uh, price to free cash flow, um, depending on my estimates. And at the same time, those cash flows are growing at roughly maybe about 9, 10% per year. And what we could see with Alta is that from a valuation perspective, it's cheaper than it's ever been, really. You have some area down here, uh, and this is actually where I bought in October and November, where it was trading at roughly 16 times cash flow. But other than that, Ulta's never been cheaper. And this is gonna be important when we go to the growth calculator in a second. But what's important to note is Ulta is a company that's trading very cheaply compared to the S&P 500. And their margins are okay for a retailer. Uh, return on tangible assets or return on capital employed, whichever ones you guys prefer to look at, they're almost all the same. Um, is very high, right? So 
uh, the S&P 500 might be around 15% or so. So by the looks of it so far, Alta seems to be a great company fundamentals wise and qualitatively. But what about valuation? If we move on to my free cash flow uh, compound annual growth calculator, uh, we do need to fill out a couple tabs here. So I've already put in the beginning year, which is um, fiscal year 2024, but calendar year 2023. That's how much they made in free cash flow. And then analyst expectations, uh, which I was able to scrape off of a website, which shall not be named, <laughs> is uh, roughly one and a half billion uh, by the fiscal year 2029, right? So I went ahead and I put in the ticker Alta, and you fill out all these different things. Oh, one thing, sorry, I forgot to mention. If we go down here into uh, the uh, FinChat website and then simply just tog on the buyback yield, uh, we can see that Alta hovers around 4% um, buyback yield currently. So that means that every year they're buying back roughly 4% of shares. And if you didn't know why that's important is imagine um, that 4% of shares is being redistributed back to you, the shareholder that you're holding on, right? So if they're buying back 4% of shares per year, that means that your claim on the cash flows that this company produces is greater by 4% every single year. I hope I made sense there and didn't use too much uh, finance jargon. But anyways, long story short, that 4% is directly distributed back to you, the shareholder, right? So if we take beginning year of ca uh, cash flows of that much, ending year cash flows of that much, we get a compound annual growth rate of roughly seven and a half percent on the cash flows that this company produces over the next five years. But they have a massive buyback, right? Massive buyback of 4%. So how does that play into it? So you could see over here at the bottom, it automatically calculates the free cash flow per share growth rates of this company. And that goes from roughly $21 to $38 uh, per share over the next five years. What that does, is that gives us a compound annual growth rate of 12% on a per share basis. So this is interesting. Alta Beauty is trailing the S&P 500 in terms of growth, right? S&P 500, let's just say it's about eight to 9%, right? And possibly this is going to dwindle over time and become lower and lower, right? While the S&P just maintains that eight to 9%. But on a per share basis, Alta Beauty is at roughly 12%, which is faster than the S&P 500. So to conclude and bring it all together, we have a strong company, fundamentals wise, qualitatively, right? And on top of that, on a per share basis, they're growing faster than the S&P 500, but are two thirds the valuation. So you get roughly a 30% discount to the S&P 500, every share that you buy. But at the same time, you get roughly a 30% faster growth rate on the underlying free cash flow that that company is producing. Hence why, if we go over to my investable universe calculator, you would see that Alta is the second best ranked in terms of how cheap it is to buy today, right? Trading at roughly 1.6 times its growth rate. So a growth rate of roughly 12% and it's trading at about 18 and a half times, or sorry, 19 times stock-based comp adjusted forward free cash flow. What a mouthful, by the way. But Forward free cash flow, price to free cash flow of 19 times, trading at a 19 times multiple, growing at 12% free cash flow per year. That'll give you a 1.6 times free cash flow divided by growth rate, right? Cheaper compared to several other companies, for example, CrowdStrike at a monstrous four times multiple, or ServiceNow 2.6, uh, ASML 2.75. And you can see this isn't exactly accurate, and I might have to move these numbers around, but Currently, as it stands, S&P 500 is around 32 times uh, forward free cash flows, and they're growing that at roughly 11%, right? Lands them almost at a th uh, three times growth multiple. So to recap, we have strong fundamentally, strong qualitatively, very cheap valuation. And what am I going to do with it? Moving forward, I don't think I'll be adding to my position. There's a chance that I'll add to my position if it goes lower, but the risk factors with this company of the excess competition and uh, perhaps if they move internationally and they're not very successful on an international landscape, that I'm, I'm, I'm personally looking for 
very strong companies that are growing very fast. So 8% organic growth, 12% per share growth um, doesn't quite interest me. You have companies like, for example, if we go back to my calculator here, we have companies like Salesforce, right? Salesforce is expected to grow roughly 18%. Or even Evolution Gaming, which is cheaper than Alta, growing faster than Alta. And I would argue they have a much stronger moat than Alta Beauty, which I'll uh, put a little tag in the corner if you want to watch my video on Evolution Gaming. Um, uh, Google even, right? Google is similar in valuation uh, to Alta, but it's growing at roughly, again, 18%, and they have a mega moat. They have a, a very, very wide moat. And best of all, of course, we have Amazon, right? Growing at roughly 22%. Of course, the valuation isn't the best on Amazon, but nonetheless, they're growing significantly faster. That adds an extra layer of margin of safety. And on top of that, you have a significantly wider moat, right? All in all, Alta Beauty is a great company, but me personally, I'm not sure I'll be adding to this position. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.